Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and this is going to be our brand new save for No Man's Sky. So I am going to be starting a brand new game because there are so many additions. There's so many changes to the game that we need to see it from the beginning. So I've played this game for multiple years at this point, so I kind of know what I'm doing, except they changed it everything. So now, I mean, yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on here, but... We need to see all the different stuff in the game. So let's do a new game. Now, they changed the beginning menu. So we have a relaxed mode, which is not as easy as creative, but it's really similar to creative. You still have to fill up like your hazard protection and things like that, but it's really, really light. It's very, very easy. And then you have your normal mode, which is what most people play on, which is fine. I'm going to be doing normal mode, but you could also do survival or a custom game if you want to. Go into this menu. And you can choose whichever setting you want to start with. So, like, say we want to start with a, uh, a creative mode. It'll change all of these options to the creative settings, and then you can turn on whichever ones you want. So, if you want to drop your damage levels, right now you don't get anything in creative mode. But you can go all the way up to challenging, which is very similar to the permadeath mode. You can go to standard, which is normal, or minimal. This is more of the relaxed mode. So you can go through and change all of these settings to whatever you want to, or you could just use the difficulty preset up at the top. Very, very cool. The one thing that I know a lot of people were going to be looking at is the crafting and system settings or uh, crafting and item settings. You can do fuel usage. So your starship, you can change it to free, discounted, standard, or expensive. Crafting, you can make it free or standard. Bru blueprints, all unlocked or learnable. This is something you need to do before you start the game. Because if you try to change this later on, you can't just instantly learn blueprints. At least not right now. They might change this in the future, but right now you have to start a brand new game in order to have this actually work. Purchases, so things you buy at the, uh, the wall terminals and the stores, the trading post in the game. You can make it free, discounted, standard, or expensive. A goods availability. Scarce, standard, abundant. You, all this stuff you can change. But again, customize it however you want to play. And don't worry. If you do something and you don't like it, you can always change it later. I will show you that when we get in the game. But let's start our brand new normal save in No Man's Sky. I don't know. Should this become my normal, like my permanent, like my main save? I, this might become my main save. Just because I want to start fresh and I want to actually experience the game all over again. I've finished the game years ago and I've just been like exploring and looking at new stuff. But I haven't really experienced the game from the start in a long, long time. So I'm looking forward to this. I can't wait. And in normal mode, you have the tutorial turned on. You can turn it off if you want to at the start of the game. But again, once you start the game, you can't like change it and turn it on and off or whatever. There's some things that are locked in. So let's begin our initialization. And this is where you start off on a hazardous planet. A planet that's going to be very dangerous for you. And you need to find your, your ship. You need to fix it and get off the planet. That's the whole beginning. It's kind of a tutorial area of this is how you play the game. You know, they, they kind of walk you through collecting resources, using all your items and things like that. Very, very cool. And it's still here. And if you're a pro player, like you've played it a million times, you can just turn this all off and just start instantly instead of going through the tutorial. Here we go. What do you, what character do you think I am? So you can start out, you get a randomized character in the beginning and you can customize it later on, but they give you the same multi-tool, the same ship, but your character might look different. Like my character. Oh, I got the blue guy. Yes, I got the blue character. You can be orange. You can be white. You can be red. There's all kinds of different randomized beginning characters. So the first thing you really want to do is collect resources. So I would always suggest get your carbon first. You know, mine some plants, some trees, whatever's around you. You'll see it says carbon on it. Get that stuff because you're going to need a lot of it. So grab a lot of it. And the first thing I always do in my playthroughs is I'll get about, you know, whatever carbon you can get. You need at least 50 because we're going to make a carbon nanotube. You need 50 carbon in order to make that. 
upgrades. And so we made that one. Now we can go over to our multi-tool because we can add cool upgrades to this multi-tool. We have a broken scanner. We're going to need to collect ferrite dust, basically rocks, in order to do that. But we can also make a visor. That way we can scan different items in the world. You want to get that as early as possible. And so we use our nanotube in order to fix it and install it. So now we have a we have a visor. So now I can pull it up and look around and scan different things. I can scan this this plant right here. Scan it. Number one, I, I add it to my discoveries. But number two, you get paid money for everything you scan. Now, you can only scan everything one time on each planet. So if I, you know, if I scan that plant and I try to scan it again, it doesn't let me because I've already scanned it. So you don't need to scan everything more than once. You just do it one time and it's good. And if you go to a different planet, it's going to have different animals, different uh, plants, and you'll be able to scan those as well. So... All you have to do is, on each planet, you have different discoveries that you can scan and earn money for. And you'll earn more money, even more money, if you scan an animal because they're more rare. The plants and the rocks are kind of all over the place, so they give you less money for that. So we need to get a whole bunch of uh, ferrite dust rocks in order to um, fix our scanner. So let's do that real quick. And again, oh, this is another thing too. You see how it says unidentified mineral? It has ferrite dust, which is um, one of the materials you get from it. But underneath that, it says analyze with some question marks on it. If you scan this an this mineral, it will tell you what that secondary object is. So now, whenever we mine it, we'll get ferrite dust and dihydrogen. So you, you can get up to two materials for some items. Not everything, but some things will give you up to two. Like this thing right here, it only gives me one. You see it says unidentified plant, carbon. Okay. That's fine. But some of them will give you two. And so you always want to... Uh, another reason to scan a whole bunch of stuff is you get more materials for each thing you mine if you scan it first. Like that, right there. I should stop because I want to scan it and see what materials it gives me. So that is going to give me oxygen and carbon. So that's a very good thing. And so let's collect a whole bunch of this material. We need ferrite dust. And you don't have to. Like, this one's unidentified. I should scan it, but there's no secondary item. There's no second material, so there's not a real big deal. I mean, you want to make the money, so do that. But, you know, it's not a major deal, not a big deal. We also have these cool blue crystals. These are dihydrogen. You want to collect this. We're going to need this later on to fix our ship. So you want to collect that. And just in general, as you're walking along, when you first start up the game... You want to get as much materials as you possibly can. Everything is important in the beginning of the game. As you start progressing, leveling up your character, getting upgrades and stuff like that, you and earning money, you'll be able to just buy the stuff and it's not a big deal. But in the beginning, you have zero money, you have zero everything. You want to collect as much as you can. That way, you don't have to buy it. Because you don't have any money to buy it. And we're not at the store yet. So now that we have our visor... Let's look around. You're going to see a marker. Okay, there you go. Because we in we installed our visor, it'll show us where our starship is. So let's go over and head that direction. We need to go fix our starship. And, whoa, wait a minute. What was that? Oh, we have an explosion. I'm hearing explosions. Oh, God. All right. So we're doing pretty good. Oh, yeah, we should have enough to fix our... Yep, we have enough ferrite dust. We, we, we mined enough rocks in order to get our uh, scanner fixed. So let's fix that. And so now we have a scanner and a visor in our multi-tool. So now what we can do is we can scan the area right around us. It's, you know, as you upgrade your scanner, it'll go farther and farther. But for right now, we can only scan what's right around us, like immediately around us. So you scan and you'll see it'll mark different locations of plants. You see, we have oxygen, we have sodium. It'll mark the different locations Dihydrogen crystals, those blue crystals. It'll mark all that stuff for you, which is really, really useful. That way you can go find it because we're going to need to get some sodium, the yellow plants, because that is how you recharge your hazard protection. Basically, it's like your shield for the environment, depending on what kind of planet you're on. And right now we're on a radiation planet, but there are like poisonous planets. There are cold planets. There's hot planets. And so you need to recharge your protection against all of that sodium rich plant there we go so we picked up that and so now we need to recharge it so what you can do is 
If you go into your menu, it'll highlight it. And if you click on your hazard protection, it'll ask you, hey, what do you want to use? And it'll tell you, hey, you need 30. The right side is how much you need. The left side is how much you have. I have 18 and I need 30 to fully recharge my hazard protection. That's okay. You don't need to fully recharge it. We just recharge it as much as we possibly can. Let's take it and drop it there. And that's how you would do that. Now, you could also do it with the quick menu in the game. So when you're playing on a controller, you press down on your D-pad, and it'll bring up this cool menu at the bottom of the screen. You see that? And this is our quick menu. We can use this to quickly, like, recharge our equipment so we can recharge all of our stuff here. We can also do gestures. Like, hey, I need to uh, thumbs up on everything. There you go. Very, very cool. Also, you can wave. But there's so many different things. You can also access your photo mode. So if you grab that, now we can look around and we can take a picture of something. Like if you, you see something really, really cool, you can take a picture like of my character right here. Get a good angle. Look at that. Look at all awesome and studly. There you go. So that is how you use the quick menu. Very, very useful. Like I use it a lot. You'll see me just as I'm running along, I'll hit down on the D-pad. And I'll switch over and I'll say, oh, I need to recharge my stuff. Here you go. Mining beam. Recharge it. Done. There you go. And so you don't have to... It's a way to do it without opening a menu. So you don't have to stop and open a menu and, and do something. You're okay. You don't have to worry about that. The other thing I like to do is there's all these smoking machines that are broken. You know, they're just spread out randomly all over the, the planet. If you go over here, they have a chance to give you special items. So let's examine this damage machinery. And then there's going to be something blocking the door. It's randomized, so sometimes it's viscous fluid, sometimes it's fecium. There's just going to be a random junk thing in here blocking the door. So you can destroy it. You can pick it up, put it in your inventory if you want to. Or what I usually do, because it's junk, you can just get rid of it. So hold down your stick and delete it. Open it up, and we got some money. We got nanites for that. So that's basically the money in No Man's Sky. That's the cash. Well, it's one of the monies in No Man's Sky. There's multiple different levels to it. Let's grab this. Condensed carbon. There we go. So yeah, we're just mining resources, getting it all in there. And then if you want to see what you have, you can just go into your menu. And here is our exosuit inventory. At the top, you'll see we have technology, and we can upgrade this. We can put more room in here. This is the default. This is what you start with, but you can always increase this and make it bigger and get more room in there. And the same thing for your cargo. This is like where you keep all your materials. This is your technology area is just for technology. You cannot put your technology down here in the cargo. It's not possible. You can only keep it in your technology area. And so we have this, you know, carbon, we have condensed carbon. So we can organize this however we want to. And later on, we can increase this and get more room in here. And it's the same thing for your starship. You have a, you know, a technology area and you have a cargo area. And the same thing for your multi-tool, except for there's no cargo. You can't, like, store materials on your, uh, your multi-tool. You can only have technology and upgrade your multi-tool. So there you go. And we also have a different tabs on the side right here. So you have your raw materials. If you select this, it'll just highlight all your raw material. You, you see how my technology went gray? What about my high value items? I don't have any, so everything is grayed out. And we have consumables and we ha also have installable tech. So you can kind of, it, it highlights it. It doesn't really organize it. It just highlights what you have. Yeah, listen to that awesome music. All right. So we have another damage machinery. Again, look at residual goop. It's another junk item. You don't need to keep it. You can just get rid of it. And, oh, we got a scanner module out of there. See? That is another reason why you want to check all of these broken things, these damage machineries, because we got a scanner upgrade in that. And again, if you wanted to see what it was, you just go over here to your installable tech. And it'll highlight what that is. If it's not like a consumable, it's not a consumable. So it went gray, but we can use this. We can definitely use this. So let's install this on our multi-tool. So what a scanner upgrade will do is you see how it turned yellow around there. What a scanner upgrade will do is it actually gives you more money for scanning different items. You remember how we were making money by scanning the, 
the plants and the animals. Well, let's scan some an another one and see how much money we get now. And you can get up to three upgrades in there. Don't, don't, don't comment. I know you veteran players. I hear you already commenting down there. I know. It's only three. I know. I know. All right. So this rock, we've never scanned it before. You see how there's all the question marks on the left-hand side of our visor, right? If we scan it, we just got $17,000 where it was giving us 200. So we just got a whole bunch of more money just because we installed one upgrade. So there you go. Let's grab this. Now let's jump into our ship. And you see it's smoking. It's broken. We're going to have to fix this thing. So let's jump in here and fix this thing. Iteration, very long number. Online. Atlas connection, intermittent. Launch thrusters, offline. Pulse engine, offline. I find myself alone on a strange world, unequipped and in danger. I have no memory of how I got here, no sense of a before. But this ship, at least, seems to recognize me. The controls react to my touch, or at least that of my exosuit. I am not dead yet, and this ship is a lifeline out to the stars. So let's uh, read the log. Log 4925 a unavailable. Substituting data. Exosuit. Connected. Suggestion. Pilot should perform maintenance. Select a desired repair path. Well, we need to repair my ship, so let's do it. Self-guided repair protocols initiated. So now we need to repair our ship. Our engine, our pulse engine is broken. We need these two items, a hermetic seal and a metal plating in order to fix our pulse engine. So that's what we need to make. So if we go into our menu, we can see what do we, how do we make a uh, metal plating? If you go into your crafting menu, you'll see we need 50 ferrite dust. If you just hover, hover over it, it'll tell you what you need to make that item. Very, very cool. So let's get some more rocks, some more ferrite dust. So, oh, where is my rocks at? Oh my God, we're, we're not near any rocks. Okay, there's a lot of plants around here. Not a lot of rocks though, not a lot of rocks. That's all right. We're gonna we're gonna mine all this crap and we're gonna we're gonna get some good stuff out of here. All right. Up oh, weapon charge depleted again. You can reload, or you can recharge it by using a quick menu. There you go, and it lets you choose whichever item you want. So if you have a whole bunch of carbon, you can use that. You have a whole bunch of condensed carbon, you can use that. Whatever one you want. I would always recommend using condensed carbon. It's more fuel efficient, so it benefits you. Oh, look at this. I love that part of the game. So we have a buried technology. We should not be able to see this, but, you know, sometimes the game will glitch out and it'll put the buried technology above the ground. This should be down in the ground, but I'm going to take advantage of a glitch and I will take that. <laughs> I will take it. Let's grab. Oh, wait, we need some rocks. Where's all my ferrite dust at? I don't see any rocks around here. Oh, wait a minute. There it is. There's some rocks right there. We need to get all kinds of ferrite dust. So let's grab this. And we're going to need a lot of it because we also we need to make multiple stuff. So again, just collect as much as you can while you can. And you'll see, you'll notice my multi-tool. You'll see when it's really cold, it's green. You see how the laser is green? And as you hold it, it'll get warmer and warmer. And it'll turn a different color. It'll turn orange and then red. When it goes red, that it means your uh, multi-tool is going to overheat. You don't want that to happen because you got to let it cool down. So the the name of the game is try to keep it as warm as possible without overheating. So you'll see, I'll, I'll let go a little bit and keep going. Because the hotter your multi-tool laser is, the faster you can mine stuff. So you want to keep it hot, but not overheat it. So, and I mean, and you don't have to. You can just let go and let it cool off and then start over again you don't have to do it but if you want to be the most efficient you want to make sure it stays warm you want it to be a hot hot laser in no man's sky you need that hot laser all right i think we have enough uh for metal plating yeah we have 270 ferrite dust so let's make two metal plating so we have one there and now that we have one already we could just hit x 
if you're on Xbox or Square if you're on PlayStation, or Y if you're on Nintendo Switch, and it'll make another one, and another one, and another one. You can make a whole bunch if you want to. So now we have our metal plating. Let's go back and install the metal plating and kind of, sort of, fix our ship. We get over here. And you don't have to be inside of your ship. You can just be close to it. That way you can get into the ship inventory. And so we have our metal plating. Let's do that. Done and done. So that is done. But now we need another piece. So we need to get back in our ship and it'll tell us, hey, there's another piece you need. Let's do that. Iteration, long number. Functional. Starship critically damaged, vital ingredient missing. Unable to synthesize required components. Pulse engine requires a hermetic seal. I need help with that, so let's request assistance. Recommendation, iteration comparison reveals hermetic seal is nearby. Salvage your planetary chart from distress beacon cache. So we need to get a map to locate our hermetic seal, our rare part that we need that we don't, we don't have. There's no way to get it. We have to go find one. Let's do this. Look at that. Oh, that's some, some new animations there. Scenario, iteration, long number deleted. Boundary separation failure likely. Vessel 16 emptied. Cause, sentinel intervention. Deliberate transfer. Analysis, fresh iteration generated. Anomaly containment prepared. So let's broadcast. Broadcast received. Traveler anomaly detected. Anomaly is compliant. Position logged. System integrity scan initialized. Here we go. A red light fill, fills my vision. All I see is crimson. And then it fades. The color drains in the world that seems so clear seems to slip away. I peer inside the beacon's housing. As well as its distress beacon unit or broadcast unit, it contains a planetary chart. Let's take that chart. I love that animation. That's brand new. I like that. All right. So now we have a chart. We need to use it to locate a hermetic seal. So let's pop that baby up in your menu or yeah, in your menu, in your inventory, you hit X. If you're on Xbox square on PlayStation, Y, if you're on Nintendo switch, there we go. So now it's going to mark the location. It kind of does this cool aerial view, but it marked the location. And now we know that is where our hermetic seal is. You can kind of hover over it. It is 800, 788 feet away. So let's make our way over there. And you'll notice I'm doing what we call is a jetpack boost. So if you want to move very, very quickly in No Man's Sky, you can just run like this. Or if you use your jetpack in the right way, you can cover a lot of ground really quickly. So as you're running, I'm using my melee attack, so I'm punching. And as you do your punch, you want to use your jetpack. So you'll notice my shoulder goes forward and then my jetpack enables. So watch this. I'm running, punch, jetpack. There you go. So that'll actually make you move a lot faster. And the more upgrades you have for your jetpack and your uh, your running, your stamina, the far farther and faster you can move. So it, it pays to upgrade your uh, jetpack, even if you don't use it a lot. If you want to do your, uh, your uh, shoulder boost, you can totally do that. So let's do that again. Run, punch, jetpack. You want to do it really, it's really fast. It's really hard to get that timing down. But once you get it, once it works out in your brain, it is so easy to do. It'll be second nature. Run, punch, jetpack. There you go. Boom. And so now we're about to run into a storm. This is part of the tutorial. So they want to teach you that there are random storms that will happen on every planet. This is a toxic planet. I thought it was a hazardous planet. This is a toxic planet. So now my hazard protection is going down really, really fast, and I need to recharge it. Oh, I don't have any yellow plants. I don't have any sodium, so let's go get some sodium right over here. Again, you, we fixed our scanner, so we should be able to find a whole bunch of these yellow plants, the sodium, NA. Let's grab this one. And now let's recharge real fast. There we go. And we need to get into shelter or else we're going to die because this uh, storm is really wreaking havoc 
on our hazard protection. Let's get down in here. Perfect. Now it'll recharge. When you're in a safe area, like a building, or you're in a cave underground or whatever, when you're out of the elements, your uh, hazard protection will recharge on its own. Very, very cool. Very useful. So if you're ever in trouble, just get out of the... Uh, out of the atmosphere, out of the air, you know, into some protected area. Accessing archive, six of seven logs corrupted. Entry 4924A follows. No one making this recording in case leaving behind in the fabricator might be of some use. Visor damaged can't find ship so i'm gonna t i'm gonna recover the surprise the supplies that they left the the previous character left the log finishes and the machine whirls to life spitting out supplies i have the hermetic seal i need to repair my ship whoever it was that led me here whoever left this message perhaps they found themselves in the same situation as i do now Yep, they probably did because they were kind of messed up. Their visor was jacked up from the sound of it. All right, and you'll find random things you can search. Oh, look at that. We got carbon out of there. Beautiful. Okay, that's... That was glitched out. It gave me three different carbons. I'll take that. All right, so now we have our we have our equipment. We have our item to fix it. So let's make our way back. And we know that's where our, our ship is because we have our visor built. So you want to make sure you have your visor, you know, built really early. And again, let's start scanning some stuff. <gasps> There's a natural burial site over there, you guys. Oh, that's good. That's later on. You can make a lot of money using that. So uh, we might have to come back here later on. Make Get some uh, money from selling our bones. You guys know I love selling bones. All right. So I'm kind of looking around for things to scan so we can make some money early on. There we go. And you'll notice whenever you see an animal, if you see like a green paw... Like that one right there? That means I've already scanned him. But if you see a red dot, that means I have not scanned them. And I can scan them and get some money out of it. So that's what you're looking for. I'm looking for red dots everywhere. I don't see any red dots. So there's no animals for me to scan, at least in this area. This is going to be a really big planet, so I can find them in other areas. This area, it looks like I've scanned almost all the animals in the area. So... Here we go. Oh, and you see that red exclamation point? That means there's a dangerous plant over there. And you can scan it and make a lot of money doing that. So, doom. There you go. 22,000. Very, very cool. We got that. But you can also, if you get close, it'll explode and shoot a whole bunch of poison everywhere, right? Like this. So, you'll take a little bit of damage if you're too close. You don't want to be too close to a dangerous, you know, hazardous flora. That's fine. But... What you can do is if you get close enough, you can actually pick the plant. You can actually take a little bit of what he has. Like this one in particular, hazard planets or hazard plants have oxygen on them. So you want to pick them and then you want to laser them and get the rest of it. So it'll give you a little bit of oxygen for picking it and you'll get a lot more when you kill it, when you mine it. Let's keep going over here. We got to get back to our ship. There's another one over here or another explodey plant over there there we go i just picked it and ran away you know whatever now let's fix our ship now the other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make some dihydrogen jelly and that just means we need dihydrogen which is that blue crystal that's all over the place it's on the ground all over the place so you're just looking for the blue h symbol like right there dihydrogen and just mine up a little bit of this. You're going to need this later on. Again, I'm going to say this a lot, but get your materials early on. Get a whole bunch of it for free. All you have to do is mine it. So it just takes you some time, effort, and energy. It doesn't cost any money. So early on, do it this way. And then later, when we start making a lot of money, we'll be able to just buy it. We won't have to worry about mining it constantly like this. All right. I think we have enough. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we have enough. We have plenty. So let's keep going. Up oh, there's our buried tech that was above the ground. It's going to glitch out. You, you won't run into this a lot, but it does happen occasionally 
where you see the, the thing above the ground. Did I scan that animal? I did not! You gotta scan this guy. You see how there's a red dot above his head? That means I have not scanned him yet. I'm gonna get some money for that. 55,000. Ooh, man. Making lots of money doing that. You want to scan all the animals you can. Animals give you the most money. So, of course, you want to scan those guys. There we go. And usually, the bigger the animal... Like, yeah, look at that. 104,000. Usually, the bigger the animal is, the more money you will get from scanning them. So, it's not always the case. Not always the case. Some animals are worth more because they're more rare. Like, they're anomaly animals. But we'll get into that later on. Right now, you just got to... You know, general rule is... A, a big animal gives you more money. Small animal gives you small money. There you go. Money maker. We are getting our uh, milestones done really early now. Holy cow. That scanner is paying off itself immensely. All right. So we have our hermetic seal. So let's put that in there. So now our engine is fixed. Very, very cool. But we need our launch thrusters fixed. Look at that. So our launch thrusters are broken. We need to fix those things. So in order to fix it, we need to make a dihydrogen jelly. Again, if you go into your crafting menu, you can go through the list. Like there's a whole bunch of basic materials and you can learn more blueprints later on. But you, they start you out with some basic stuff here. And one of them is dihydrogen jelly. If you hover over it, it'll tell you what you need. 40 dihydrogen. So let's make one. There you go. And you see I have two. If you want to, you can just stack them up. And again, it says I have two. And I can stack it up to 20. So you see how it says 2 slash 20? That means I have 2, and I can go up to 20 in this one stack. And then if I get more than that, I have to make a second stack to uh, to accommodate that one. So we're in here. Let's uh, let's install our, our dihydrogen jelly. So we have that. Let's install that. So that's done. But we need one more thing. We need pure ferrite. So what we need to do is we need to make a we need to make a uh, a refiner, but the refiner is not a buildable uh, product. You can't create it from your crafting menu. What you have to do is go into your building menu, which is up on your D-pad. So you press up on your D-pad, and this is where your build menu is. And the only thing we know how to make right now is our portable refiner. We will learn more things later on, but right now we just have the one and. Just like our crafting menu, it'll tell you what you need. One metal plating, 30 oxygen. We have both of them. That's why there's a check mark there. So let's grab that, put it down. We can put it down anywhere where it's green. If it's red like that, that's a place that's unable to be built on. So you can't build it there. You have to wait till it's green like that. So now we have a refiner, just like in Minecraft. You can go in there and you can go into the menu and it needs fuel. So you need to put some fuel in there. It takes carbon or... Uh, condensed carbon, whichever one you want to use. I'm going to use regular carbon. And in order to get pure ferrite, we need to refine our normal ferrite dust. So we need to take this and refine it into pure ferrite. There you go. Boom! And if you see these little tiny numbers right next to the uh, ferrite dust box, it says one to one. So one ferrite dust will turn into one pure ferrite. This number will change depending on the material. Sometimes it takes two of these items to make one of the more refined items. So the example I will tell you is if you if you want to make condensed carbon, so you have regular carbon, then condensed carbon. If you put regular carbon in there, it takes two regular carbon in order to make one condensed. That's why I have 878 in there, but it will only make 400. You have to cut it in half. So we don't want to do that. I'm going to back out. And then we need to pick up our portable refiner. So if you hold down, you click in your right thumbstick, it'll pick up your items in your, your uh, refiner and put the rough, all of it in your inventory so you're good to go. Very cool, very easy, very simple. So now we have our pure ferrite. Let's install that. And now our ship is totally fixed. We are good to go. So now it's time to leave the planet so we hold down our right trigger there you go so the uh there we go we're out in space now we're going and if you want to like for me i prefer to be in third person so if you press down your d on your d-pad go all the way over to this gear icon and now you have all these different options but one of them right here switch your starship views that way you can see what your uh, ship looks like in space i like it 
you, you know, it depends on whatever you like. If you like first person, go for it. If you like third person, go for that as well. Either way works. So now let's fly around a little bit. And then it tells you over on the right hand side, hey, this is how you do this thing. Like you can just hit your uh, your right trigger and it'll it'll just engage your engines. And if you hit the B button, if you're on Xbox or the O button, if you're on PlayStation, you get a little bit more of a boost. You get your boosters going. So you go a little bit faster. And if you want to engage your pulse drive, your supersonic speed, hold down both left bumper and right bumper or R1 and L1, hold them down for a second. And then boom, it engages. It takes a little bit of time for it to warm up. But once it goes, you're set. You're done. So there you go. And oh, but now we're getting a message. Let's see what's going on here. Incoming transmission. Source 4925B. Oh, this is the log we were listening to earlier. Please identify yourself. I'm... Z I Okay, let's identify. What's going on? Who the heck is this? You are not... Z alone follow the and that's it the broadcast ends as strangely as it began the final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates all right let's input that thing oh now we have uh coordinates data so now we know there's some strange signal coming from that planet over there very very cool so in the next episode we are going to go investigate this signal source and see what's going on. Hopefully you guys like the, the new save going through and experiencing the story from the beginning. Hopefully you did. If you did, hit that like button. And if uh, you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. I'm uploading videos all the time. And I will see you guys next time.